population growth and there is a low economic growth, or is there a third factor that affects both? I would say there is a third factor, it's poverty. It's poverty and education. So if you uh, raise, uh, the, the, uh, decline the level of poverty and increase education, the problem is solved. So therefore, we should not look for an explanation by uh, looking only at the link between population growth and economic growth. I think, so it's an issue of causality. But we see the same issue of causality, in my perception, in the discussion of a, a problem that some people perceive as extremely important, that both of you even refer to, which is the youth bulge. I do not think that the quantity of young people, mainly young adults, is the cause of, as uh, you stated, uh, that uh, young men is a recipe for civil disorder. I do not need believe that. It's not the presence of young men. It's their prospects. And you mean that it's, if you say uh, Yemen has an unemployment rate, a youth unemployment rate of 50%, it's the unemployment rate that's the problem. Should we create jobs? Should we create jobs in Africa? Should we create jobs in Yemen? Or should we uh, create jobs here and uh, involve them in our economic activity? I should also, everyone knows that uh, the remittances that migrants send back to their countries okay. is a multiple of the official development aid. Thank you. Five million youngsters waiting for a job in the Middle East each year. Um, uh, Madam, over there. And then you, and then you. Madam, you. Uh, my name is Lia van Wezenbeek. I work at the Center for World Food Studies at VU University. And I have a question that is much related to, to what was just mentioned about the kind of regress that we face now in the sociological and kind of cultural acceptance of women's rights, which in my view con contradicts the, the idea that education really is the key because all those countries, especially Mexico and Chile, they have uh, had all these educational programs. So how can you make sure that women's rights, which are essential for all these choices, are really guaranteed throughout the process and not killed by some elite or by a kind of acceptance of violence against women as we see in Africa. I saw Chile and Mexico are examples of uh, falling fertility. Oh, I uh, mentioned that the, there, of course, the church is the one that's now having a strong influence on, on the attitudes of people. Um, please. Yeah. Uh, my name is Niels Garde from Population Services International in Europe. Uh, my pr uh, question goes to Dr. Sindling. Uh, if I understood you correctly, then you said that, um, well, uh, investments in family planning after Cairo went down, and from a fundraising technical uh, perspective, rep uh, sexual and reproductive uh, health and rights has not been the right message. It has not been a very powerful message to uh, generate funds and um, means uh, for family planning. But, and you regret uh, that population has fallen apart as, as an argument, as an impetus uh, to boost that kind of investment. But isn't it that Cairo... I, I said specifically uh, that my characterization was not a lament. Yeah. I didn't, I'm not regretting it, I'm stating it as a, as a fact. Okay, good. But my, my question is, well, whatever uh, we feel whether it's good or a bad thing is, isn't it that Cairo was able to bring together two groups of people who were standing apart from each other beforehand? That we, uh, Cairo allowed the people who were uh, arguing for family planning because of a rights-based approach and the ones who were more concerned about population growth, they came together and, and jointly probably uh, made a stronger voice. The reason that investment in family planning went down was probably another one. Thank you. The third one, you well, next to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. My name is uh, Quintijn Hogemo, member of GroenLinks and also of the Club van 10 Miljoen. Uh, I first want to ask you if you could pick all three one microphone and speak in your answers close in the microphone. So just now you were very difficult to, to be heard by me at least. And please uh, speak more clearly in the microphone. I, I have one question specific to Mr. Uh, Sinding. You told about the developments, the new thinking in the um, in the developing countries that um, less children are have more advantages. The old saying always is, well, 
poor people need a large family for their old age security. Are you saying in, uh, with your story that that is not anymore the case, so that is not an argument anymore? That's, that's one question. One question to um, Minister Kunders especially uh, is, well, you say um, population control mm -hmm. is regarded as a dirty word since Cairo. Population control, which means forced measurements to push down the population. But um, you say there are a lot of developments which implicit try to populate, to try to control the population, but without mentioning it. Shouldn't we in the debate, and especially in Holland too, mention the things again? And if population control means trying to achieve a lower uh, family size just by doing promotion and making it well, look better, make it more advantages for people. Wouldn't that be part of the debate? Thank you. Okay, and then the last question, you in this row. Uh, 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 <coughs> okay. My my name is Khalid Choudhury. Both of you uh, mentioned Bangladesh. That fertility rate has gone down, and. You, Professor, you said, okay, that if fertility rate goes, goes down, then the, the, the economic growth uh, goes higher. And the minister uh, was talking about uh, the middle class, that the middle class is increasing, I mean, in the, third, uh, in the developing countries, which I personally would like to say that there used to be middle class in the de developing countries, which has been eliminated. So the middle class have joined are actually the poor's. So the consumption of uh, the meat and other things, I mean, that demand is gone down, or the production of meat is even, even not there. So I have a question for both of you. Let's, let's, say, let's take uh, Bangladesh. The, the birth rate has gone down. The family planning is uh, a successful uh, attempt. So what about the, po uh, the poverty rate of Bangladesh, which is uh, right now at the top of uh, the poor nations? Uh, uh, at this globe. So if there is any statistics about the, the, the birth rate has gone down and the other side the poverty uh, uh, rate is also gone down. Thank you for this. Mr. Minister, you first and then. So that would be second. So I could still think <laughs> so difficult questions you, you, you ask. Um, yeah, let me start by the first issue that was uh, mentioned that is, oh yeah, I have to speak in the microphone. Uh, that is the relationship between um, economic growth uh, and economic prosperity and, and, and population. Look, the, the gentleman who asked the question is an expert on this. So I very much realize that I have to watch out in what I'm saying. Uh, but I would tend to follow the, the following argument that in, a, in very general terms, and I think there's nothing new uh, in saying that, uh, you see that with higher levels of economic growth, you know, there is a decline in fertility rates. That means, in essence, that economic development and investment in economic de development is one of the best ways to reduce population. That's in itself uh, true. You, you say no, but I think that is probably uh, not unwise to remark. It doesn't mean, however, to say, because this is at a very macro level, that if you look to individual countries, of course, specific policies can influence also the fertility rates. And that requires, that, that depends very much on the domestic realities, <coughs> the issue of ideology, of women's rights, but also of the health systems, of the money that is spent on that, on the way actually the distribution of income is within a country, etc., etc. So from a very general point of view, I think it is very correct to say that economic development uh, is a good investment if you, when I come to your issue in a minute, if you want to say we need less population or not, but if you would like to have lower levels of fertility, then that is definitely the case. At the same time, we see from all the different studies that family planning itself can be an additional factor in many countries uh, to speed up this process in certain ways, or sometimes even to not speed it up, to make it slower, because the fact that there are misinvestments in this. And I think in the case of Bangladesh, uh, that is definitely uh, a relationship between the type of policy and family planning programs and the rate of growth of the econom economy overall that can explain the specific uh, lowering of fertility in, uh, in Bangladesh. 
Second, on the issue of middle class, um, I didn't make, I didn't want to make because I don't have the statistics on it and I don't know.